Welcome to Forklift Operator Training, Class M600. For this training, along with this training video, you'll also need two packets of information. The first one is your forklift regulations packet. The second one is your understanding forklift safety. And then finally, you'll also need your test. Now, let's look at a quick video to show the importance of forklift safety. You all right? Now the name of that video was Insanely Funny Forklift Accidents. And sure, looking back at those, some of them were pretty funny. However, a lot of those were dangerous and caused a lot of damage. And because forklift accidents are very dangerous and sometimes even deadly, there are some rules and regulations that people must follow. 
The Code of Federal Regulations 1910.178A talks about all the regulations governing forklift trucks. What is a forklift? The definition is a mobile power propelled truck used to carry, push, pull, lift, stack, or tier materials. Forklifts can be either electric or internal combustion powered. Now here's a picture of Island Air's forklift. How is our forklift powered? And hey, yeah, you're in training right now. A lot of you might be thinking, is this really important? Why should I care about forklift training? Well, here are some statistics for you. Every year, 100 people die in a forklift accident and over 36,000 others are seriously injured. Look at this pie chart. Find your age and figure out which age group you are in the pie chart. Here's another question for you. Of the items listed, what do you think is the biggest cause of forklift accidents? If you guessed tip over, you're right. Which problems should you be extra careful about when you're operating a forklift? Let's move into operator training. The employer shall ensure that each powered industrial truck operator is, first of all, competent to operate a powered industrial truck safely. They have to demonstrate successful completion of the training and evaluation as specified in the OSHA standard. And prior to permitting an employee to operate a powered industrial truck, Except for training purposes, the employer shall ensure that each operator has successfully completed the required training, either here at the company or previously within a certain amount of time. Here at Island Air, employees need to be trained every two years for forklift operation. So let's talk briefly about the training program here. We'll start off with formal instruction. That's what you're undergoing now with the lecture, discussion, interactive computer learning, and written material. In addition to that, there'll be practical training, which will show you hands-on how to operate the forklift. And finally, we'll end the training with evaluation. Within the training program itself, the content that is covered will talk about truck-related topics, workplace-related topics, and the requirements of the regulations. Now, refresher training may be in order if there are people who operate the forklifts unsafely, who have an accident or a near miss, if evaluation indicates that person needs training, if there is a different type of forklift introduced to our company, or if the workplace condition changes. Now remember, please report all hazardous situations and actions immediately to your supervisor. Do not allow yourself or your coworkers to be yet another statistic. We'll mention briefly Appendix A. Appendix A has been provided for you in your packet, the forklift regulations. You'll need to read through the regulations, and then at the end of that section is Appendix A. Appendix A has some good things in it, the definitions being the most important. 
Then we'll talk about general and basic principles and end with the stability triangle, longitudinal, lateral, and dynamic stability. Those last four items are good, but the information provided for you in Appendix A is a little bit difficult to understand. So, you've also been given a forklift operator reference manual, and that manual discusses in a much more easy to understand way all of those important topics like the stability triangle and the different types of stability. So, please read through that manual and understand the information. One concept discussed in great detail is the stability triangle. This forklift has a triangle inside of it, and that is the stability triangle. The circle in the very center of that triangle represents the center of gravity. This picture, where the circle is in the center of the triangle, represents a forklift that is unloaded. Once the forklift has a load, the circle will move gradually closer and closer towards the front of the forklift and if the circle goes beyond this line perimeter of the triangle then the forklift will be off center and will start to tip forward. This is a very common problem with forklifts. Another thing that influences the center of gravity of a forklift is how high the load is. Now here we see the stability triangle is further elevated up into the air and now that it's high it's three-dimensional so we actually can call this the stability pyramid and these two things will be discussed in detail in the chapter that follows. This is something most of us don't want to watch because it gets pretty gruesome. But that's essentially what happens in a large percentage of forklift accidents. As safety and health specialists for the Department of Labor and Industries, we investigate forklift accidents. In a large number of these, the driver has been crushed between the overhead guard and the ground. Just like a mouse in a trap, people are usually surprised at how deadly a forklift accident can be. That's because they're used to seeing forklifts zip around making tight turns in and out of narrow spaces. And since they act nimble, people assume they're light. But that's wrong. Dead wrong. Even without a load, a forklift can weigh as much as two passenger cars. When it tips over, it comes down hard and fast. But that doesn't mean the driver needs to end up like our poor mouse. They're supposed to stay in the cage and stay alive. The driver's cage is designed to withstand many times the force of a tip-over. The trick is keeping the driver inside the cage. See, a driver might mount and dismount a forklift many times a day. They'll do it quickly, naturally, they'll do it automatically. And when something goes wrong, the forklift starts to tip over, their first impulse can often be to try to jump clear. This model illustrates why that impulse can turn out to be so deadly. As soon as the center of gravity gets outside of the machine's stability triangle, the heavy weight of the forklift acts like the spring in a mousetrap. We talk about the stability triangle because even on a forklift with four wheels, the pin on the rear axle makes it act like it's balanced on a triangle. As long as the center of gravity stays within the stability triangle, the forklift stays upright. But when the center of gravity moves outside of the triangle, over it goes. And the further outside the triangle the center of gravity gets, the more force is pulling to top downward, and the faster it goes. By the way, the higher the load is raised, 
the faster the center of gravity moves outside the stability triangle. That's why the rules say you should travel and turn with the forks as low as possible. But tip overs do occur. Drivers get in a hurry, travel and turn corners with a load raised, hit potholes, drive over ramps or loading docks. And that's why seat belts are so important, to keep the driver in the cage. They override the impulse to jump to safety. Many forklifts are also equipped with these side restraints. They help remind the driver that they are in the safest place to be. And of course, there's no substitute for good, effective training programs. That's actually where saving drivers' lives all begins. These four fingers. So what are you going to do now? Excellent, excellent. And then you don't hear that. Training on each machine, the person will operate in the workplace. And training on hazards specific to that workplace. Starting with the seat belt every time. Teaching the rule of drop and roll. Making sure the driver understands why that's so important. That makes sense. Mm -hmm. So the key in the safe operator is to make sure that the center of gravity stays in the stability triangle. And then enforcing the rules. We've used the mouse and a trap is an illustration of what often happens to a forklift driver in a tip over. But you need to remember that's all that it is, just an illustration. We're actually talking about people's loved ones, someone's son or daughter, someone's mother or father, that spouse that left for work this morning but will never be coming home again, that permanent emptiness at the dinner table. If you really want to see the seriousness of forklift tip overs, ride along with someone the next time they go to notify a next of kin about an accident. What you'll see right in front of your eyes is the complete, total devastation of a fellow human being. Someone suddenly and completely drained of all their dreams, all their happiness, of their complete future. It's an experience that will haunt both of you for the rest of your lives. And then you'll become like me. You'll never again accept an excuse for not wearing a seat belt or for taking any other shortcut when it comes to safety. And if you're a forklift driver, remember, it's not just you riding along there in the cage. So as some final precautions, please know horseplay at work and take safety seriously. And, of course, like we mentioned, wear your seatbelt. Stay protected and stay alive. Thanks so much and have a great rest of your day. If you've got any questions, please email me at erichie at islandair.com. Thank you.